What is it about Angela Merkel that contributed to her being one of the longest tenured and most popular Western leaders, working with eight Italian ministers, five <laughs> British prime ministers, four French presidents, and four American presidents, and yet still leaving office with an 80% approval rating? And what will her legacy to Germany be, to the EU, and to Western democracy. Like many of us, I have had a cursory understanding of a very private Angela Merkel, but a fantastic new biography, The Chancellor, by Kati Martin, coalesces the details, contextualizes her role, and presents a sweeping view of her tenure that is enlightening and thought-provoking about her legacy, the status of Western democracy, and the players on the world stage and how, from the most unlikely of beginnings, she became the most powerful woman in the world, maybe the most powerful person in the world. Kati brings her award-winning journalistic skills, membership on the Council of Foreign Relations, and travels around the globe to take us on this extraordinary journey of this most humble of leaders. Kati, welcome to Just the Right Book. <laughs> uh, Roxanne, I, I'm just delighted to be with you. As you know, um, my my visits to your bookstore over the years have been an essential part of my writing life. Oh, that's and so I, sweet. No, truly. And, um, of course, Bookhampton is also my neighborhood bookstore, but yeah. R.J. Julia holds a special place in my heart. And it was at R.J. Julia that I got word many years ago. Um, I have to figure out how many, because um, that's that's where uh, Simon & Schuster called me to say that uh, Hidden Power was on the bestseller list. Oh, oh I remember that. Yes, yes. That is, that is, you know, one of those moments in life that you just never forget. Wow, I'm on the New York Times bestseller yeah. list. Anyway, so so I associate R.J. Julia with, with wonderful events, yeah. and, and the conversations with you are always the best. Well, so thank you so much for choosing the chancellor. Yeah. And, uh, well, I'm, uh, I'm in love. I, I'm, I'm not just in love with this book as... Friends of mine would know I'm obsessed with it. Good. And here's the thing that, it, you know, yeah. there's a lot of headline events that you go over that that mm. really reveal a lot of who she is, and we'll get to those. But I think her beginnings are so defining. She is the daughter of a kind of remote uh, mm. pastor. Yes. And as a sense of duty... He goes to East Germany where Angela is raised. So yeah. share with us how that beginning was yeah. so defining to everything else. Absolutely right. Yeah. No, so so Roxanne, um, her, her father was, as you said, this very austere Lutheran pastor with a deep sense of the need to serve and responsibility to, to those um, who are uh, less privileged, which which really, um, as 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 we will discuss, I'm sure, um, really is at the core of of um, uh, Angela Merkel's uh, political life. But um, the fact that her father chose to go from the security of West Germany right into the jaws of the Soviet monster, if I can put it that way, and I can because I too grew up in a Yeah, in you a were Soviet. there in yeah, Hungary. Yeah. So, and and if I can just um, insert that, that I think that my understanding of her journey um, was uh, facilitated by the mm. fact that, that we grew up under somewhat similar circumstances i as as um, as as the child of political prisoners in in soviet controlled hungary and uh, and she uh, as a um a victim of the stasi state uh, for the first 35 years of her life and that decision was made by her father who said that he would have gone anywhere to to preach the word of the lord and well, voluntarily Oh, absolutely. There yeah. were very, very few West German uh, ministers or pastors who were signing up for duty in Soviet-controlled uh, East Germany, which right. was officially an atheist state. So it was a dangerous, b um, 
talk about a hardship post. So they went from Hamburg, which is where um, Angela was born, um, and which was which had had been decimated by by the Allied bombing, but but was reviving very fast, to this um, remote hamlet in Brandenburg province. Uh, not far from the Polish border in East Germany. So it was an enormous sacrifice and one that was thrust upon her. I mean, uh, the child did not choose to be to be taken into essentially Soviet Soviet custody in a way. I mean, she referred to East Germany as a as a lager, which is the German word for camp, concentration mm. camp. And it was a the the ultimate surveillance state. Well, and, you know, speaking of it being a surveillance state, you know, I certainly knew how how um, formidable and wide the informant structure yes. for the Stasi was. But when I was reading the book and you come to understand the danger of standing out mm -hmm. in any possible yeah. way, because the yeah. definition of what was in violation to your hmm. responsibility as a communist citizen yeah. was pretty damn yes. wide. And this is where she learned not to call attention to herself, yeah. which again uh, served her so well in her political life, and we'll get to that. But, but yeah, it was dangerous to, to, to stand out. She always sat in the back of every class at the same time, she was always the the best in every class because she was brilliant, and um, the, 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 that that she could not disguise. But but her affect, her appearance was about as drab as it could be, and and you know some would say served her well. Yes, some would say that with with minor alterations, and I'm sure we'll talk about how she has made some compromises in in her appearance as a, as a politician as yeah. as she enters we'll, we'll get a, to that good 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 okay um so the the um she's then trained as a chemist she goes yes. to a university the best the best university in in um in the east in the east block leipzig university and again her her first exposure to just how how far the Stasi penetrated individual lives was when she was nearly held back from graduating from high school for a kind of a uh, a childish prank. She sang the the uh, communist anthem, the Internationale, in English, the language of of the, the enemy. enemy. And so they were not going to let her uh, graduate, even though she she had you know won a prestigious. Um, place in, in Leipzig University and her her father the pastor had to get to work and and smooth things out for her so she so she could go but but you know it was it was a sign that however careful she was she could never slip there up there was no room no 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 there was uh, absolutely it was a great training ground actually for for, for a, a politician a future politician to be that uh, cautious and that in control of her narrative. So here's something that was hard for me uh, to even grasp. She is a chemist, but you mm -hmm. know, incredibly brilliant, respected, mm -hmm. uh, briefly married to another chemist. And then what seems like illogical, mm -hmm. she because she is slightly active in a political or mm. maybe more yeah. than slightly you'll well, expand on that yeah. but then she is becomes a minister in yeah. Helmut Kohl's cabinet yes like, youngest... how did that even happen so yeah her ascent was absolutely meteoric when the wall fell on on that uh, night in November 1989 um, she being a, a creature of habit, she was sauna night, so she uh, Thursday she went to her sauna. But rather than doing her usual going to the pub after the sauna, she grabbed her towel and crossed into West Berlin for the first time. Um, f uh, a few hours of just absolutely, you know, dazed and not too strolling. far from the wall. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, no, she crossed where where the opening in the wall. Um, there was suddenly this this breach in the wall, and people were just um, East East Berliners were just flooding, pouring across, um, and. Uh, 
couple of hours of of um, of, of, of just stunned uh, uh, perusal of, of West Berlin, which was which was you know already uh, uh, this this shiny uh, metropolis uh, compared to to the to the pitch black and un, unrehabilitated East, unrehabilitated yeah. from the bombing. And economically and, disastrous. Ec yeah, the, the economy was was um, teetering. But at any rate, so typically for Merkel, um, she few hours of that was enough for her. It was like being in a foreign country. In fact, she was she, kind of like a refugee in her own country. She she uh, later well uh, one of the people who who uh, really brought her to life for me was her her very close friend from that period a man named Michael Schindhelm, who um, uh, opened up about about what she was really like in those days, and he said that we yes we were refugees because to be a refugee means that you give up everything mm. that is familiar to you your friends your habits your you know your favorite. Uh, rock groups, uh, movies, what, what have you, and and we all of that just kind of collapsed under us, and so we were refugees without without having left our our country, because East Germany was no more. But unlike most East Germans, Merkel was not going to be among the left behinds. She was so. Uh, a, Pent up with with ambition and 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 um, un uh, and, 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 and thwarted uh, plans because she had it turns out chosen science as a more or less safe place to park her her brain because science was was tougher to tamper with even for the Stasi than uh, than than certainly politics or humanities so that was really. Um, a, a sanctuary for her whilst waiting for better days. And now suddenly, boom, her moment arrived and she was not going to waste her shot, as Hamilton <laughs> said. She, 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 went, she went for it. And that, too, uh, is characteristic of how she operates. She's very cautious, but when things open up, she moves. Somebody's phone. Yeah. I'm glad it's not mine. Yeah, sadly it's mine. Oh, well, that reminds me that I should. All right. Uh, I should check mine too. Roxanne, this happens at every event. All right. Don't feel bad. Sorry to everybody. <laughs> okay, the phone's off. Yeah. Um, you know, the thing that was striking to me as I was reading about it. So she's in this cabinet. Yes. And, and I think this is the beginning. Uh, as I started to read of understanding how adept she was at managing men. So yes. Helmut uh, Kohl was a good old boy, well, right? Absolutely. He was in the, he was in the Bill Clinton, maybe he was pals with, oh, he they, was. Yes, of their, course they their, were. Their epic uh, dining out uh, in Washington, uh, I, I, I recall uh, I was a young reporter at the time covering uh, Clinton and Cole when, when they were buddies. And they really were kind of uh, well matched. Of an ilk. Yes, yes, and 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 both. Well, Bill Clinton no longer uh, has this gargantuan appetite for yeah. for for pasta, but but Cole was. But in addition to being a man of of, of large appetites, he was the a titanic figure of German politics responsible for the unification along with J Jim Baker and, and Bush the Elder. He was, so he was a huge figure in, in, in Germany. In German, and, and he had chosen her um, as, as... And what do you think, uh, was he attracted to the idea that she was representative of the unification? She was East German? Did, do you yes. think he had any sense of her ambition? Not at all. I mean, all. he called her like my little girl my or... Mädchen. Yeah, very, very sanctimonious. Yeah. And you know what? This, this again, this, this um, foreshadowed men, powerful men, always underestimating her, which was uh, one of her superpowers, is, is that she allows men to underestimate her. You know, recently a very powerful figure who I will not name, but who would be known to you, uh, said to me, congratulations, Kati, for reframing the drab Mutti, uh, that means mommy in German, um, and making her seem so interesting. And I, and I said to this gentleman, um, 
you're mistaken. I didn't. I didn't reframe her. I unmasked her. Yes. But she was never. Because there it was. She was never what they uh, assumed her to be because quite deliberately she didn't want to call attention to herself and she understood her ego is so under control. Boy, I've learned so much from <laughs> observing her um, that um, you can get a whole lot more done if you're not always taking credit for it, if you, yeah. in fact, um, do it quietly and sideways as opposed to frontally. But, you know, the thing that I'll get to after we mm. come up with some, we go through some of the examples, is the question that it raised for me mm. is whether that is the style we demand of a woman to mm. allow her, I'm, mm. quote, I'm, yes. I'm using yes, air quotes, I understand. to allow her to be successful, or in fact, is what we're witnessing is that those are the qualities yeah, that's in a, a man mm. or a woman that contribute to enormous, stable, political mm. success, because we've seen the role of swagger. I mean, I think you have a quote somewhere in here from someone that, um, maybe it's from Socrates that you quote <laughs> about never let your hate for an enemy oh. interfere in your judgment. Right, right. Yes, yes, it is from Socrates. Yes. yes. And, mm. you know, yeah. she yeah. she understood that. No, it's I from the Godfather. Of... It's from the Godfather. Oh, it's Michael <laughs> Corleone. Socrates, Godfather. Socrates, yeah, Michael what's Corleone. The what, what the hell? <laughs> That's right. It's Michael yeah, Corleone. It's Corleone. Yeah. I, yeah, I go high and I go low. <laughs> there is a Socrates quote in there. I but... think in that chapter at mm. the top, you have yeah. a, Socrat a Socrates, Socrates quote, yes. and then it's Michael <laughs> Glad we glad we sorted that out. Yeah, yeah. Don't let don't let your anger get uh, cloud your judgment, and that that and she certainly doesn't. You know, I I I, I mentioned uh, in passing that her ego is under control. She has a very robust ego. I mean, nobody nobody uh, becomes chancellor of of the powerhouse of Europe, Germany, if they don't have a big ego and if they don't think they can handle the job. And she has to be aware of the fact that, that she has a photographic memory, that she was always the smartest kid in the class, and that she knows how to bide her time. She, she has self-control, which I have to say, very few male politicians, most politicians are male, have that level of self-control and the ability to just let to, to sit on things as opposed to erupting, because she does not uh, uh, identify herself with her her role. She she has a very strong sense of who she is, and has yeah. a, and has always had a separate life from her political life, which I think is really key to the fact that that for sixteen years she's had this the crushing crushing uh, burden of of this office, and yet she seems fine. I mean, she is um, you know a woman of a certain age who who, uh, you know, can, can get off the flight from, from Beijing, uh, which she frequently does, and go straight to the chancellery, a woman mid-60s who's carried on. And partly it's because she hasn't let the, the, the office, office define her and consume her. And this is such an important lesson for not just for politicians, but for, for anybody who has ambition to, to, to have a big job is, you know, don't be swallowed whole by the job. Keep, keep something to yourself. And she's been masterful at keeping but, a but separate... But you know, Connie, here's the thing that it makes me think about, and not merely as a matter of semantics. Right. You would assume that someone who was as ambitious mm. as she is mm. has an ego. Mm. But the other defining quality of her mm. is her humility. I mean, she threw out her chancellordom. Mm. Yes. Is living in a rent control yes, same apartment yep. apartment right. in a pre-war building which yeah. isn't the same thing as a pre-war building in new york no. where it's some <laughs> fancy thing it's sort of a communist 
You're a, yeah, be, no doorman at this no, building. No doorman. Mm-hmm. And sh- she stays there. Yeah. She stays there yeah. the whole time. So an ego would have wanted the more trappings. of the trappings. She she sees those trappings as, well, traps, things that would just uh, slow you down. She it's it's it, it, it's impossible to imagine her as as, uh, you know, uh, the Chatelaine of a big mansion of the sort that Putin acquires or or Trump or any of them, really. Um, she thinks that you that that the less you own, the less weighed down you are, you know, even even in the last year when when she was like all of us doing doing a lot of Zoom calls from home and she never, unlike most of us who, no who revealed, revealed, you know, what we're reading and our flowers and stuff, nothing, nothing, nothing uh, a blank wall because she just separates the office from the life. And I think, again, a big lesson about, you know, keep Keep yourself to yourself. So she had, you had something here that, so it's in June of 2005, mm-hmm. right? She's running, um, uh, well, I guess yeah. you don't run to be the chancellor. You're yeah, a party and then you're picked. It's, the, it's right. a it different is the, system. It is the most Byzantine uh, coalition federal system, by the way, constructed by ourselves, the, 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 the victors in the war. And we wanted... Um, the 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 new federal republic to be to, for, for power to be as diffuse as possible right. to to prevent any Hitler ever again uh, rising to the fore. But it makes German politics almost beyond uh, uh, description complicated. But but here's something that was interesting. You talk about in June of 2005, she mm-hmm. approaches Tony Blair. Yes. Who is yes. in Berlin for a visit. And right. I'm quoting your mm-hmm. book, which is yes. quoting her. Right. I have the following problem, yes. says she. I am a woman. I have no charisma. <laughs> and I am not good at communicating. Yeah. And she wanted his advice about how to compensate for those deficits. And an aide of Tony Blair said at the same time, she was obviously confident she could win. Yes. But here she lets down her guard yes. or, or I don't know. Yes. What... Well, she, she's, she's aware of her, of her uh, deficits uh, because she is as clear eyed about her strengths as, as she is about her deficits. And again, because, because she knows her, her own, uh, she, she's without illusions about herself. That too has enabled her to call on people who would uh, fill in gaps in her own uh, in 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 her own character. But so she was she just was never objective oriented. Very much so. Yeah, she was as objective about herself as. Look at she's a trained scientist, so she analyzes uh, herself and. <clears throat> And and any given situation, and and very rarely does she act on impulse. One of her mantras is the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. Um, so she 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 really she really like a good scientist. She really weighs the evidence. And of course, you know, in 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 the kind of complex world that we now live in, particularly in the time of COVID. Um, that has proved to be a tremendous advantage because she's not afraid of numbers. She's not afraid of uh, technology. She's Reports. very she's very tech wise, despite the fact that she doesn't do social media. She was among or the, emails. No, nope, no. Nope, and, and she only tweeted. Uh, she only accessed Twitter because um, uh, during her four toughest years, the the four years of Trump, um, she to see what she, he was saying. She had to because that was the only place where where he expressed himself, and so she relinquished her her taboo on on Twitter and followed him on on uh, on Twitter. But she's she she was among the first to signal the tremendous power and danger. Of social media, she put that right up there with, um, well, nuclear weapons as a as a danger for for society. So one of the one of the seemingly first public indications that she might be viewed as ruthless, yes, 
was her mentor, the, the yeah, man she threw who, him over. She yep. threw him over. Yep, she did, she did. She she is again, here's a trait, um, not to be sexist, but you know, women are are supposed to be somewhat sentimental, emotional, boy oh boy. She's a scientist. Yeah. She she is she's unsentimental. When when um Cole, her mentor, uh, who really was responsible for her for her uh, ascent in German politics was caught in a in a scandal and no one else in the hierarchy of the of the uh, Christian Democratic Union her party had the courage to say thank you very much we got to move on here yeah she was the only one and she did it so so uh, with such speed and and really uh ruthless is, is the word um she she wrote a, a front page uh opinion piece for the biggest german paper saying it's time to go helmut it's time to go and of course uh, that that cleared her passage and to unexpected the chancellery. people did oh, she not didn't give Nobody had warned. no heads up, no heads up, and that's the uh, another characteristic of hers is is that she doesn't signal her moves. She just she she's cautious. One of one of the stories that her friends love to tell uh, from her childhood is uh, is Angela, uh, teenage Angela or eleven year old uh, on the diving board on the high dive, oh, right, uh, um, walking up and down the high dive, um, and until the the final minute. You know, looking down and seeing, yikes! It's a long way down until the the um, whistle was blown by the by the uh, gym teacher and that it was over, and then she plunged. So that's you know, off, often the case with her. She waits. She she she. There's even a, a German word called Merkeling, which means putting off a decision until the so last. So you have minute. to. Yeah. yeah. So what I want to cover is I want I want to cover her relationship with. Um, three presidents, mm -hmm. uh, Bush mm -hmm. one, Bush two, and Obama, and talk a little bit about that. And then I, I want to talk about um, her relationship with Putin mm -hmm. and particularly talk about their meetings um, at the time of the invasion of Crimea yes. and the Ukraine. But she and George W., I mean, she had great affection for George W.'s He was father. her hero. Uh, 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 the elder Bush's portrait was in her office. So, you know, he was... And he his was one style of... was proximate to her. Right, right. Um, but he, it, she um, ha has, has a reverence for the United States, or did until quite recently, yeah. and we'll get to uh, her, her, her shock at recent events here. But, um, yeah, Bush, uh, the elder, and Reagan... Uh, were her heroes, were her yeah. Cold War heroes. And I have a description of, of uh, a man who, who was present, um, the American ambassador to, to Germany at the time, Robert Kimmett, when she, when she met uh, Reagan and then met um, um, Bush the Elder and, and you know, the, her, her starry-eyed was you know, speechlessness, but but the surprise for me was was that the chemistry between Bush the younger, so W, and 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 Merkel was, was very immediate, right? Yeah, they really liked each other, and and I she found him to be a, an authentic mm. uh, man, and also they're both people of faith. Uh, she she her faith, her Lutheran faith, is something that she is extraordinarily private about she doesn't think it's our business to know what her faith is or and but it's and, defining for but her. it yeah but it, it's more a question of of um morality and and responsibility toward others than uh um she has i mean i i i uh quote her in trying to describe that she has uh ambivalence about god and so on but she has no ambivalence about um, that that here 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 on earth our our duty is to is to do the daily work of of uh, of salvation. She often refers to the fact that for her, um, Sisyphus rolling that that giant rock up the guy. mountain, it, it is not a is not a pessimistic image. He's doing even, his job. Even, yeah, even though the rock keeps falling. Uh, on on his head, uh, that that is. I mean, it's so he revealing. Persists. 
Yes, he persists. So I would I would characterize her as a determined optimist, not a not a um, not an optimist per se. Um, but nor is she Henry Kissinger. She's um, she 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 nor is she Barack Obama, who believes um, that the arc of the moral universe bends toward justice. She doesn't think so. No. But speaking of Obama, so they at first her take mm. on him was not so great. You know, no. he was a he was the talking All charmer, talk. the hope, mm. hope, hope, and um, she was suspicious of and him. suspicious of him. Mm. She came to have respect for him after he passed the Affordable Care Act. But one of the things that I don't think I quite understood. Mm was one of the criticisms of Obama was him drawing a line yes, in about Syria. Syria's use yes. of gas. Yes. And then when he crossed that line, his staff, Susan Rice, a number of others, were sure that they needed, we, the United States, needed to prove that you don't cross the line and then not be accountable. Yes, Hillary but, and Samantha Power and, you know, they were they were all... Uh, in favor of uh, because Obama had had stated that that was a red line and that we would. Uh, but it was an Merkel Assad crust. who convinced him not, not to. to. And in describing that, Kati also talk about Angela's aversion to the use of military in any yeah. way. Yes, because I think. Yeah. We again see that when we get to the Ukraine, which I, I do want to get to. But yes. talk about that with and the influence on Obama. Yes. Well, Obama, um, uh, Ben Rhodes, whom I um, spent a long time talking to, a key aide to Obama, of course, um, said that, that Obama's uh, relationship to Merkel was as close to love as, as, uh, um, as he had with any... Mm. Uh, and the closest that he the relationship with any any uh, foreign leader. foreign leader, um, she, and and uh, th th that love was accompanied by tremendous respect. I I have one chapter entitled "Get Me Angela on the Phone," which which is a line frequently heard in in the White House uh, from from Obama. Um, according to Ben Rhodes, when he, when he wanted to know pretty much anything about anything, he would turn to uh, to Merkel. So tremendous respect, and therefore wanted her support um, in in Syria. But she uh, was she's opposed to um, use of arms. She does not believe that that military intervention ever, ever works. works. It, it's not to say that she's a pacifist, but you know, given Germany's terrible history. Of having started two world wars and the Holocaust, uh, she has good reason to um, to be to be wary. Plus, which she is a child not of not of the Second World War so much as the Cold War, and the Cold War ended without uh, weapons being fired. I mean, here and there yeah. they were, but I mean, but it was the tanks, yeah. And so that that is kind of her 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 um, you know a prototype for for resolving conflicts, not moving arms. And then then of course there was the fiasco of Iraq, um, which she further fueling yes, her belief. Yes, yes, her. So so when um, so when Obama uh, declared um, with great fanfare that Assad must go. Um, as a precondition for negotiation, uh, she was quite she was quite horrified that you don't you don't make a precondition for negotiation because that guaranteed that 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 this ruthless dictator would fight to the last Syrian to hold on to power, um, and so she didn't think that was. Do you think very... she regrets that stance? Mm, no, because. Um, uh, because she does not believe that that um, the U.S. engagement in the Middle East in, with with arms ever leads to anything good. It didn't mm. really work out in either Afghanistan or or Iraq. So no, I don't think she regrets that. I think uh, what she does regret, and I'm sure we're about to get to that, is how little support she got from Obama and the rest of the Western allies when th these these um, wars that Germany did not start um, begat the, the, the greatest migrant. human 
uh, migration since the Second World War, and then suddenly nobody was interested in in uh, in, in, in helping them. And she, that's when she really came into her own. You know, because the I was struck by the juxtaposition of two seemingly contrary uh, positions that she took during the two thousand and eight crisis, mm -hmm. when Germany had. Um, very carefully accumulated a surplus. Yes. And therefore was not as undermined financially no. it, as it, most countries were, obviously, including the United States. Absolutely. And Greece was a member of the EU, and <clears throat> they were, you know, flagrant in their um, not being compliant with the tax system and corruption yeah. and all of that. But and, not the Greek people. It was their government, really, that right. that, that lied to the people. Uh, yes, of, I mean, you're quite right there. But, there she, was, but the Greek people didn't see it that way. No. The Greek people saw her oh. as this kind of um, yeah, she, it, she inhuman, was, yes, in, yes. unsympathetic. And then Terrible. juxtapose yeah. that with her willingness at great political odds and probably to the rise of the alternative of the alternative mm. uh, the far party, right mm. the the right that's now mm. emerging yeah. took a highly humane view to yes. allow 1 million absolutely migrants so juxtapose juxtapose yeah. for us how both of those represented elements of who she was yeah because they're at well, odds Absolutely, but she's a complicated person, and and that's what makes her so interesting. She's not all all um, uh, humanitarian, and she's not all mm. um, pragmatic either. It's the what downside the of her pragmatism. Yes, the 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 um, financial uh, crisis of two thousand eight um, re revealed her her a, a rather unattractive side to her, where where she was h highly rational, high and rigid in her imposition of austerity. She Germany was. Europe's banker, and and um, and as as you said, uh, in a far better position financially than than anybody else. And she was preaching austerity to to countries that were you know on their knees, and uh, not only Greece, but Greek, uh, but Greece the most um, vivid example. Italy and she was also right. Yes, and Portugal and Spain. Uh, and even Ireland, and she was suddenly depicted um, with a Hitler mustache and burnt in effigy. And burnt. Yeah, yeah, and and that was that was uh, a shock to her, of course, and um, and she even though she she did ultimately favor uh, bailing out Greece several times over. But then but they had not they they weren't going to forgive was, her. She lost the she lost. Uh, the PR war there, but she she this is a, this is a, a a woman who's constantly learning from her own uh, experiences and mistakes. And what she learned in two thousand eight was that first of all you have to factor in the irrational uh, element in human decision making. She has she has uh, she's such a hyper rational uh, creature that she sometimes forgets that not everybody uh, operates is, that way. Yeah, we're not all scientists. So when when did the that experience inform her treatment of the refugees? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. But there was something else, um, Roxanne, and she had a very personal encounter with a refugee girl, and and oh, in a town hall. Yes, right? yes. And it, it's it's a very dramatic moment, and I would say it's it's the it's the climax of 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 my book. I mean, it's it's not near the end of the book because it's, yeah. it's twenty fifteen, but uh, but in point of fact, that that um, encounter with a refugee girl who started weeping on camera in front of the chancellor, and the chancellor whispered a single word into her microphone. The mic picked that up. Got. God, God, and uh, and you could see that she was shaken to the core, and subsequently she invited the little girl uh, to the chancellery, uh, typically for Merkel, no cameras, no uh, publicity about the fact that no that PR, little girl, no, yeah. no, she doesn't milk these uh, situations for for PR. She she uh, would look down on that, um, but um, that was the summer 
of of the of the of the great migration from the Middle East, uh, escaping the civil war in in Syria, and most European countries were busy erecting barriers against them or treating them horribly, like like Hungary. Yeah. Um, and um, and she, uh, it, w with incredible courage, um, said, "Wir schaffen das," which means we can handle this you know very flat assertion typically undramatic and it kind of took the drama out of it for her country and her people and for a long time her. yeah her, they, you know they 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 lined up on train stations to welcome these these poor bedraggled souls that had been kicked out of several other countries en route and uh and germans really enjoyed and continue to uh being on the right side of history for a change and have coped with it. It's not a front burner issue anymore. Those one million Middle Eastern refugees have been largely assimilated. And that is her to her uh, permanent credit and, and legacy. And I think people, you know, you talk about a couple of the incidences of violence that, yes. that, that became fuel for those who were anti her doing it. But to a large degree, she required them to learn German. Yes. That they needed, they had to go where Germany told them, where jobs were yes. needed to yes. be filled. Germany's population was older. These uh, these refugees were younger. And to a large measure, yep. they, they have been absorbed. And I think yep. until I read the book, I I don't know that I had quite registered because I too read the headlines, right? That yes, this happened and that course. happened, and yeah. but what I want to make sure we get to because where we only even have fifteen minutes, which seems crazy. I yes, want to make and we sure have much to get through. I know. I want to cover <laughs> two things. I mm. want to end and talk about her legacy, um, and make sure that we leave some time for that. But I was just dumbfounded mm. by her relationship with Putin. And I want to set the mm. stage with the picture that you have uh, on the chapter labeled dictators of Angela, <laughs> like looking in what I might call light disgust yeah. at Putin. And Putin is doing his KBG stare yes. down right, right, at right. her. Yes. And yet mm. they spoke frequently and I want oh to God. talk about this incident. So Putin, although he denies it, he sends his plain clothesmen, other military uniform people into little the green Ukraine. Men. Yeah, yeah, little green men into the Ukraine. And, um, you know, he's denying everything. He said, I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. And Obama sends Angela to deal with him because yeah, he, 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 he could, didn't he like could, dealing he, with he him. Couldn't. He said, I can't, you know, he's yours. He's yours. And yeah. Putin had begrudging respect for Angela. But they ultimately, literally sit down, you mm. describe, for 15 um, hour yeah. days yeah. going over maps yes which she had this is this is her i mean uh, describe uh, this yes, it's just crazy yes. to me yeah this this is when she became uh not just the chancellor of of europe but of but of the world really because obama uh passed the baton on to her in 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 the 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 first invasion of another country since world war ii in europe that is you know uh, yeah. leaving aside the balkan wars which were more internal um, and because Obama just uh, didn't have the patience he's he's not uh, by Merkel standards he's not a, a great negotiator she will stay at that table till the cows come home I have a quote from her uh, saying um, that the only way she could tell the time of day was whether they were whether they were serving um, bread and jam or or, or a roast um, so she just her focus is absolute um, when when she's negotiating and she 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 says that she's like a camel she can uh, store up uh, uh, sleep and um, and go for days without it and then collapses when it's over so she really um, blocked uh, Putin's further expansion and not only that she uh, further ex I mean, they expansion sat at into the table 
Yes, and everybody else was falling asleep, including uh, the by, French minister, yeah. right? Somebody else, was, <laughs> yeah. and they're there working. Yes, although yes. Putin sometimes sent in some uh, uh, a really rough guy. Uh, yeah, the who bad, was the, the bad, bad guy, the bad cop. Yeah, but um, the, her relationship with with Putin is 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 so interesting, and and they have such a clear understanding of each other because they're both products of the of the same foundation, the sure. same totalitarian Soviet base. And in foundation. fact, Putin was in Germany, Germany yeah. when the wall came down yes. and left in some like tin can car. Tin can carrying an, a used washing machine in the back. Um, yeah, for, for for Putin, that was the great tragedy of his life and of the 20th century, the, the demise of the Soviet empire. For Merkel, on the other hand, that was her rebirth as a as, uh, But it a, meant a they person. had that common experience. They did, plus they literally speak each other's languages. So she's fluent in Russian because you had to learn that as a, as a child growing and he's up. fluent in German. And he's, yeah, and I, I asked her not long ago go, uh, which language do you now speak with Putin? Because because they still, he's the only one who, um, uh, who she's the only one that, that, that he really respects and, and, and speaks to, um, who, is some, who isn't beholden to him because he likes to talk to people who are lesser than him. But um, with, with Merkel, um, yeah, so, she, so she answered, well, these days, um, we uh, we rapidly um, switch. I start off speaking to him in in Russian, and we rapidly switch to German because his German is is better than my Russian now. But they he they know each other perfectly. He tried his damnedest to to shake her her composure by you know the KGB a staring test, unleashing his dog dog in a meeting. Yeah, because he knows that she's afraid of dogs, having twice been bitten. Nothing works. Um, and and she you know she is unsure shakeable because we we spoke earlier of how she observed men macho men particularly uh, alpha males alpha males peacocks and uh, and and she's just not that impressed by them and you know this this of course would drive trump crazy as well because she just she doesn't react cuz they need that yeah, you know they yeah. need the yeah. when 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 uh, when Trump fished out a couple of Starburst candies and from threw his pocket, them at yeah, him, right, uh, and 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 said at a at a um, at a G twenty meeting, a sort they're having right now, um, uh, and said, Angela, don't say I never gave you anything. She didn't even react. Yeah. You know the others the others around that conference table were just appalled, Angela complete control but but her eye her eyes are so expressive and and that photograph yeah, that you the, referred on the to, cover the is eye, brilliant yeah thank you but but uh, she she um rolls her eyes when uh when he's mansplaining to her um and or or when when uh when Trump is, for that matter. I mean, that is her one. But then when the meeting is over, she'll go to her staff and they've they've reenacted for me how uh, she's got a really good little uh, takeoff on, on that. It would, it would uh, go, go very well on Saturday Night Live on, on, on Putin all riled up, you know, doing his little dance. Um, and and uh, she's she's a good mimic. She's she's, she's by funny, the way, right? She, she's funny, hilariously funny, v yeah, very but you dry, would never very dry, know. very dry. <clears throat> no. Because again, she doesn't want us to know that because that's that's that doesn't belong in on her public side. I think it's unfortunate. I think she often misses opportunities yeah. to connect to people and and but you know it's the combination of thirty five years. And the surveillance state, and the Lutheran background, and a scientist, and, and a scientist. And by the way, okay, so she's not winning any world charm contest, but she is the world's most respected leader, and no lame duck. I mean, she leaves; she has I mean, left crazy. the office um, without without anybody breathing a huge sigh of relief. On the contrary, there there is is serious concern as to who now will lead the West. And I don't see too I mean, many- you talk about a worry uh, that you analogize to 1933, when uh, mm. there was mm. somewhat of a void. But what I want to get to is, so one of the things that she's been very criticized for recently by mm. the US, by mm. the EU, is allowing the Nord Stream yes. Two gas pipeline. So she understands who she's dealing with, with Putin. 
Um, this is Absolutely. certainly at odds with giving them any kind of economic, giving Russia any kind of economic stability. The EU is opposed to it. But this yep. tiptoes into the notion of legacy. And that is, yep. she shut down the nuclear plants after Fukushima. Fukushima. She uh, couldn't make a fast enough pivot to alternative energy. They therefore had extraordinary energy costs that right. were going to undermine the economy. So she made the pragmatic decision that this was good for Germany, if yes. bad for Europe. Well, it was a pragmatic choice. And again, going back to her, her mantra about the advantages outweigh the disadvantages, she's, she's a non-ideological, non-dogmatic person. And, and in this instance, I mean, I, I criticize her for this. She, because, because you're keeping Europe strong and united is, is her vision, uh, especially now that, that the United States is no longer such a reliable uh, senior partner. Um, but here she chose German interests and, and, you know, partly it comes from the fact that she's so aware of, of, uh, Germans history and their, and the fact that, that this is a country that she does not want to test under economic duress. She feels that this is a country that has revealed, uh, susceptibility. Um, and she when... understands the role of fear. Oh boy. Yes, she right. sure does. So, so she, um, so she opted for the German interest in this instance. And she can be she can be faulted for that, but she does not want the German uh, economy to 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 tank um, because because of uh, her ideals. She's again to emphasize she's she's pragmatic, but she's a pragmatic uh, decision maker with with a with a moral center that she never abandoned but it's a tight it's rope. A, I was just going to say I was Whoa. just going to use the word it's That's a tight, a tight rope. rope because when I read as I read mm. the book and I understood you wouldn't call it contradictory not, because it's not no. it's of it's of a whole yeah. of yeah, her she's, persona she, it's a balancing act and so with China too you know she's been going to China more than any other uh, head of state since since 2005 she's gone every year and she sees what's going on in China she's she's not uh, wide-eyed about you know the crackdown on the Uyghurs and and on on Xi Jinping's um, messianic uh, dreams but she thinks that that China has to be engaged and that China is was once upon a time a great a, 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 a great cultural and and uh, um, economic leader in the world, and then fell upon a, on um, hard times. And it has a it has a place at the table, and we have to deal with it. And we you know we can't she because she avoids bombast and and you know easy formulas. Um, she she rejects uh, ever ever saying saying to. Uh, somebody like Xi Jinping um, in, in front of the cameras, um, that um, you, this is unacceptable. It's not her she, style. But her aides assure me that, that once they are behind closed doors, she does tell him that uh, you're, you're forcing us to retrench. This is not in your interest. But, but she would never, she's never, she's never taken on um, either, either Putin or, or back in the day, Trump. Uh, in front of Publicly. the cameras, she she thinks that's cheap and 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 has the opposite of the desired effect. It's all theater. It's it's you know it's to to um, uh, puff up the the uh, the 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 her the position little, at yeah. their cost. Yeah, yeah. And, but yeah. she knows that won't move the needle. That and won't push. She, that won't push that rock yeah. up the hill. But, but no. But you know she she is. I I, I don't depict her as as a perfect. Uh, anything, no. but but she is just in, vastly more um, interesting than than is is the common image, and and even Germans don't know how interesting she is. I I, I hope that uh, when they read my book, they'll discover that that she's vastly more interesting than they've been led to believe. But but she, uh, I once asked her if she read the books written about her. And she said, uh, yes, but I don't recognize myself in any of them. Mm. And I'm kind of hoping that, that um, 
that she will recognize this herself. This is not authorized. She no, did no, no, not it's speak not. to you. No, but she we knew had, you were writing it. Yes, and she allowed me um, to observe her at work, and she allowed me to spend a great deal of time w with with members of her inner circle, which was actually unusual. much more uh, valuable than a sit-down with Angela Merkel would get me 0.0, .0 information, information because she's so controlling of information. But to actually observe her and sure. uh, and and also I did, you know, just scores of interviews with, with people who've known her their entire lives and, you know, friends, teachers, um, schoolmates. Yeah, there's some interesting. So, Kati, mm. we, we've got Two minutes. Oh, my goodness. I know. This goes fast. I know. <laughs> Roxanne. Um, so, you know, obviously, we we didn't get to a gazillion questions yes. or chapters. Yes. Um, and I do hope our, our listeners will read the book because there's so much to learn about history, about her, about how Thank you. How we're positioned politically. Mm -hmm. But what I'd like your thoughts on is so it, her legacy mm. it, on the one hand her legacy of Ger uh, the condition okay. in which germany is and yes. maybe the fault lines that are beginning to show with the advance maybe because of immigration of the right the yeah. the eu well, is weakened well, l let me just say, since since we have so little time, that um, her, she's transformed the country. I mean, there's no disputing that it is a much more open and tolerant country, and more and, liberal, and more yes, to toward women, toward you know, she she made marriage equality the law of the land. Um, all this as head of the Christian Democratic Union, she she opened up space for women. Um, she she did all this as a stealth politician. With that, I don't think she ever gave a single speech about women, but but she 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 made it happen. Right. Um, and and she made multi uh, a multi ethnic uh, culture um, a, a reality. There's no going back on that. But I think that. Um, most of all, uh, what she has done is is put to rest forever the notion that w that a woman of how a woman leader leads because because the things that she achieved uh, the the ego free um, politics and and the um, the fact that that um, she her focus was on her people not on herself. Um, I, I I don't think that those uh, achievements are in spite of the fact that she's a woman. I attribute them to the fact that she is a woman, and I think it's a it's a it's a new image, a new definition of a powerful woman leader that that um, we can we can all learn from. So, Kati, do you hope or believe mm. that? Her leadership, mm. so she's been in politics now since 1990. She was chancellor since 2005. 2000. Do you think that there are women leaders in the world that now look to that model as a potential recipe for success? That that Absolutely. That woman doesn't yeah. need to become an alpha yeah. you know female male no, abs absolutely because it because it, it's a formula for success yeah because if this and can, do you think people understand that i mean hopefully I, they'll read this book and they'll understand <laughs> yes, it I'm very much hoping yes it's been translated into 15 languages so is that it, right yes yes that's that's a first for me yeah, i was going to say is that the most of any yes, of your definitely. books definitely i've had three or four languages but uh, but 15 no and and so this is an international book it's not principally for you know german political wonks wonks it's not an academic book it's not a uh, it's actually it's a, quite riveting Oh. <laughs> Thank you. I was hoping you'd say that. I really, I mean, I yeah, found myself uh, just because it's a history mm. of of the world, of world politics in the last 20 something years. Mm. I mean, it, it, it as a reader, it makes me worry about Germany. Is she leaving mm. a power void 
Um, no, she's not. Oh, she's good. Not. She's not. And I, I, I would say that Germany will be the last country to succumb to populism, I, because oh, it has. Oh, you're done... cheering me up. Oh Kathy. yeah, yeah. No, the 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 AfD, the far right party in the Bundestag, uh, polls are are dro support is dropping for them. Um, I think COVID revealed the need for for actual competent leadership. When there's a crisis, you don't just want you know hot air. You want people who know what they're doing. Yeah, and so and they their understand support, that. And so the support for the AfD is is uh, is very low, mostly from East Germany, and that again speaks to the incomplete fusion of East and West. Yeah, and you and talk I about fault that. her for not spending enough time. Bringing, showing up yes yes understanding yes yes these 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 people wanted to be acknowledged it's not the economy stupid it's because because the germans continue to pay a solidarity tax to their east german um uh, uh, neighbors. not unlike how the democratic party has been criticized for not understanding how Absolutely. the middle class was the, not able to keep up yes, over the, the so-called left behinds. Yeah, but it's a it's a global um, discontent right. with with the uh, the you know the, the those who have done well as opposed to those who have not and who are living in gutted cities, neglected, whose whose you know kids have moved out and and you know we saw some of them uh, storming the capital on uh, on January six. They were, for the most part, they they were they were older people actually. And not... they, so let me ask you yeah. two questions as as a close because we could probably go on for another I sure hour. Yeah. But <laughs> um, when you set out to write this book, mm. what did you hope the outcome would be? And more, more speculatively, mm. um, we know that Angela Merkel reads books about herself uh -huh. what do you think or what do you hope her reaction to the book would be well um i i set out um i started in 2015 on this on this project um because i was so astonished that that um that she accepted all these middle eastern refugees at a time when when everybody was telling her that 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 there would be the lies. death of her yeah yeah people like kissinger and and other uh, republican wise men um and um and it hasn't come to pass and i wanted to know who she really was i had met her um in in 2001 uh we we had a dinner um, and, and again, I don't know if we have time for this, but this was very revealing of her. She wanted to um, meet my, my late husband, Richard Holbrook, because she, he had successfully negotiated the end to the war in Bosnia. And she was in those days a minister, but, she was, but she's always interested in learning from people who are good at whatever they do. I and mean, Richard is, Holbrook had been an ambassador to yes. Germany before yes. Anglo. Right. Right. Yes. During the Clinton years. Yeah. Um, so. Um, I so calling I, her Angela. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm sure. Oh, she whatever. Would, I'm sure she wouldn't mind. She'd call you Roxanne. Um, and uh, and it was it, so so it was it was typical of her that she would ask to have a meeting with with Richard Holbrook. And that was my first to learn from him. As luck had it, the fourth person at that dinner was Susan Sontag, and Susan Sontag did all the talking. And but I got to observe, no surprise there. Uh, but I but I observed uh, the politician Angela Merkel in those days a minister, in in active listening mode mm. and you could just see that this is a person who wasn't at that dinner to make an impression she was at that dinner to absorb and i just thought wow that yeah. is so rare in a and politician the most defining quality i think of her mm. that, yes that her capacity and curiosity and dedication yes to learning even if it were a passing conversation she's she's still doing that the last time i was in the chancellery she she was uh reading um uh, books on uh on quantum computing 
I mean, for pleasure. So why not? You know, we we need we need serious uh, public servants, not not people who um, are are busy telling us that our neighbor is out to get us. So Kati, we've used up two excess times. Oh, and uh, uh, and we still haven't gotten to uh, everything, but, um, but a lot. But we covered a lot. We covered a, we covered yeah. a lot, and there's more in the book that I, I mean I think what you do in the book, which is was helpful uh, and made it fun for me, is there are details about history and there's details about her and there's mm -hmm. details about relationships and there's details about people still on the world stage. Yes. Um, yes. Well, you know, we didn't even talk about her relationship with Macron. So but, yes, but that's the, a, people will have yeah, to read it. We can't get will, to it. Because that's an interesting uh, and, and another complicated relationship, the Macron uh, Merkel uh, duo, yeah. uh, a study in contrast. So we've been talking to uh, Caddy Martin, the author of The Chancellor, of the remarkable odyssey of Angela Merkel. Caddy, always, always so much fun. Thank you so much uh, to for have a conversation. Me. Um, and thank you. thank you for this book. People ought to buy it just for the picture of Angela. On the it's a good one, isn't it? <laughs> it yeah, is. That arresting icy blue gaze. Yeah. Yes, yeah. But thank you for your you. time and thank you for the book. I thank you. I thank you, Roxanne.